recording to cloud. Okay, so you guys, we wanted to throw this call together really quick because 2020 is quickly approaching. And, um, you know, thinking back on some of the things that we did when we got started, um, some of those things have fallen through the cracks a little bit. Yep. And so we wanted to get on this call and talk about the value of um, some things that have really propelled our businesses forward, which really truly created momentum um, that we have to make sure that these things are duplicating. Um, I was, you know, thinking a moment ago of, you know, like how powerful la this last year has been and how incredible some of the things, some of the systems um, have been to our growth and to our business. And I was thinking, you know, one day I want a team of a hundred thousand people and like genuinely, truly like that's, that's the goal. Like that's the big, hairy, scary goal for me. Right. Like I know Keith has had a team of like 500,000 people and I'm like, I can do like a hundred thousand people. That'd be pretty cool. Um, and, but how do you get that? Right. Like how do you get to that point? I had a conversation with Keith, um, at the diamond dinner at convention and it was such a simple conversation. He said, you know, you have to keep it simple. You have to keep it duplicatable and you have to love on your people. That was it. And I believe that of him. I know that it's true. If you've spent any time with Keith, he's wonderful. He's soft spoken. He's very warm. Um, you really feel that he genuinely cares about people. But it's not rocket science. It's simplicity, it's duplication, and caring for people. And so right now, we have a team of a little over 1,500 people, maybe closer to 1,600. I haven't checked it in a little while. Um, but how did we even get there, right? It's duplication, it's simplicity, and it's a few simple things that really we just took off running with. And so um, my encouragement to you guys is know what you want out of this next year. And then also, you know, start dreaming again. What is that big, hairy, scary goal to you? You know, I shared that with you. I haven't shared that with anyone before. Um, you know, it's not going to be a thing I scream from the rooftops that I want a team of 100,000 people, but I'll say it to our leaders because I want you guys to know the vision that we have for this, for this team. Now, how do you get a team that large? You help a crap ton of people. Like, insane amounts of people get to where they want to be right like that's how you end up having a really um powerful movement like that so um guys i i am so thankful to enrique um i'm not sure if nancy's able to be on yet i haven't been able to scroll and see but um we were chatting earlier and we were talking about like just some simple stuff and he's like let's get on a call i'm like okay when and he's like today i'm like okay let's do it so um, thank you, Enrique, so much for taking the time, for always being willing to hop on. I know you have a very busy day today, um, but we really love and appreciate you guys. So I'm actually going to kick it over to you, Enrique, and then we'll go back. Yeah. Na Nancy's on. She's on here. Uh, so we can, uh, we can jump in together if you want. I'm good. I'm right here. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, you know, when we first started this, um, a little over a year ago, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just coming in and kind of just following what Ricky, what Ricky was telling us to do, Ricky and Chris. And he's like, Hey, you know, this is what I did when I came into the business. If you guys want to run fast, this is how you grow. This is how you create momentum. Right. And, uh, and how you create speed. And he was just like, this is what you need. And, you know, Ricky did it. You know how Ricky is. He did it. 10 times bigger than us. He bought $10,000 worth of product and stored it um, in his garage. You know, like we didn't do that. We did a 10th of that. We did $1,000 worth of product. And that was enough to get us launched to where we could follow his system, which was, uh, you know, sample everyone that we, we come in contact with and also send out samples to our new, to our, for our new teammates. So every time somebody got enrolled, um, you know, we would get a feel for them. Did they come in on a pack? Are they really serious about building this business? Um, they are. Okay, great. Let's send five to 10, uh, samples out to their, you know, top five to 10 people. And let's, let's get this thing rolling fast. Right. So when they're getting their enrollment pack, 10 people have already been sampled. So they're either ready to become a customer, want to know more information about the business or, they're plugged into our customer page, just kind of hanging out, reading through everything. And eventually that might convert into something, right? But if you do that over and over again, the percentages are, are more in your favor to be able to convert at a, at a very high, 
high level and at a very fast pace. So imagine if you had your whole, your whole entire team doing that and duplicating that down. And that's what we had in the very beginning. Like everybody bought into that um, because it worked. And then Melissa and Brendan, they started doing the same thing for their team. And then they started doing the same thing for their team. And then we started duplicating that in, in, uh, in our other legs as well. And that's how this thing started moving very, very quickly. Because there was a time where we were growing slow. And then all of a sudden, like, hyperspeed kicked in. And then everything just started growing at a pace that we've never experienced before. And that's because people were following this same exact system. Now, what happened was, you know, when the debacle with version two and all that, and then they took the shareables away, that system kind of fell to the side and then it it no longer worked because we didn't have it and we weren't really sure what version we were getting and and so on so it kind of threw us for a loop and i think in those in the last few months everybody's got away from doing that and it never it just kind of broke off right so now that we have everything in order again we have the right version three samples we have the zest we have the new nitro we have the new chocolate like we're ready to rock and roll for 2020. We got to get back on that system. If you guys want to experience that super like insane growth that we were, that we did, that we experienced last year. And um, there's no reason why, why we shouldn't do it. I mean, if it really works and you're, you know, you're, you're investing, I don't know, 200, you know, $200 a month in samples, 250, whatever the price goes to. And then it's converting and bringing you back thousands of dollars in, in income or, or sales or revenue, then it just makes sense, right? There was one point where when we still had the shareables, Nancy and I were buying four to five boxes a month of shareables. That would be about $1,000 a month is what we were buying. And we were getting rid of all that product every single month. That means business was growing. And we had people who wanted to sample the product. And we had elopreneurs that were enrolling teammates. And we were sending out those samples. Like as soon as someone enrolled, send me your top 10 address. Tomorrow, we're going to the post office and we're sending them all out tomorrow. Like that's how efficient we were. We we're at the post office like every single day because we knew that's what it took. Right. And, uh, yeah, it can be a pain in the ass sometimes, you know, driving there and back sometimes multiple times a day, but I mean, it's part of it. Like it's part, you know, I, we're willing to do whatever it takes to get to that level. Right. So, um, yeah, the app thing sounded like a great idea and it was like, Oh yeah, the app is out. Yeah. Let's use that. But it turned out to be a disaster. Just, just being real, uh, 10 days to 14 days to get a sample. Uh, and then sometimes it's not even the right thing. So um, we can't depend on that if we want to move fast. So um, this is the way we did it when we launched. And I'm telling you, it worked. And there's no reason why it's not going to work again. Um, so Nancy, do you want to add anything to that? That's it. Just um, <laughs> we wanted to get it in as many mouths as we could. And what's the fastest way to do that? Sample as many people as you can. And it does convert as long as you're following the system. And that's all there is to it. And yet the duplication of being able to sample for new entrepreneurs coming in, we didn't just do that for our front line at first. We were doing it multiple levels down because right. we were in this thing to win big. And it didn't matter if the person that came in didn't have the money to buy a big pack. If they were bringing people in, we're not just going to let those, you know what I'm saying? We want to make sure the duplication kept going with everyone, even if the person in between wasn't stepping up. Did that mean that money was coming out of our pockets? Yes. But were we here to go big or go home? Yeah. You know, and that was going to require tons of samples. And that's why under my desk has always been full of samples and we've never stopped. Not only that, we also gave back a lot to customers, you know, in the customer page that all is still going on and we're still going to do that. So even with all that, you know, our, our business, even with all that giving back and all that money out of our pocket for samples and extra tubs and, you know, giveaways, it's paid us back so many times. We don't even think about buying samples. It's just part of our normal daily method of operation. If, it, there was a there I think even with Melissa at one point one time for her I think and one time for us we actually didn't plan ahead in time for the growth and we ran out 
And guess right. what? Our business stalled um, because we couldn't do the things we were normally doing. And the other part of that is there's other other reasons why you need to have samples on hand. Let's say you have, you know, and every customer counts and every entrepreneur counts. Let's say someone's uh, order is delayed for some reason and they're a really important someone on your list, right? And the company just got theirs wrong. If you have stuff on hand that you can just send them and say, hey, here it is until the company gets it right. That's why Ricky, at the point that he was at, he had 10K worth of product because that was during the growing pains of the company, right? Right now, we don't have those growing pains, but once in a while, we might. So we make sure we're completely stocked up, completely stocked up on samples. And me and Enrique also, and I believe Melissa too, are going back on another 90 day run as if right. it's our first day, because we are growing this all the way <laughs> and you can't just kind of rest on your laurels and hope it'll, it'll duplicate. We're just going to go out and duplicate again and do the same thing we did. Um, and, uh, and so we've gone out and, and gotten a bunch of samples, really excited to have version three, have everything. I'm just so excited about the zest samples because those are going like hot cakes and, um, you know, they're all in our car, they're in our purse, they're, you know, envelopes are everywhere. Um, if you, it's funny cause I was seeing some old videos from the past year, uh, like someone put some zoom clips that they've taken pictures off and you can see, you can always see yellow packages on the back here, you know, every single time. Cause I remember that's exactly what we were doing. So it's just, it is the way we built. It's the way Ricky built it. And we just came in and said, what did you do? We're going to do the exact same thing. And anytime we've veered away from that, which like for version two, we didn't really, we weren't sending those out and you know, our business didn't grow at the same rate that it was and you know we all we're all leaders here we've all been in other companies before we all know the massive amount of fuel it takes to get the rocket off the ground but once it's off the ground and it's flying it's amazing and part of that massive amount of fuel yeah is our action but part of that action is the sampling you know you you just can't get away from it so and and plus you know every this is going to be a product that a lot of people are going to end up using and I definitely don't want it to be where it's our network is buying from someone else where they were right there in front of us. And all we had to do is extend a hand and say, Hey, if, um, could you send me your address? If you sent, if I sent you a couple of samples, would you give me your honest feedback? That's all you need to do. And then you've sampled them. And then the conversation is open, whether or not they buy now, whether or not they join you now. So that's that was our attitude at the very beginning. Amazing. Like, thank you guys so much. It's so powerful. And I mean, how hesitant and resistant was I to that in the beginning? Like, I was <laughs> pain in the butt. Thank God. <laughs> they still uh, want to keep me around, you guys. I was a huge pain in the butt because I just was afraid to trust that. I was afraid to invest so much money back into something. We had a huge financial need. I didn't want to spend money on, you know, samples and products that. I didn't have that trust there yet, but here's the thing. I will never tell you guys, Oh, drop your money into this, blah, blah, blah. And then it's a gamble. Maybe it'll convert. Maybe it won't. No, for once, finally in my life, I can say, Hey guys, fact, it will convert if you're doing this properly. You know, if you're just being excited, you're following up, they're in your cup of happy, the simple system that we have, as long as you're doing those things, I know it converts into business. Mm -hmm. And so exactly what Enrique and Nancy just shared. It's, you know, putting that skin into the game, deciding to trust and then running like crazy with it. And what Nancy just said about like, you know, she doesn't want um, her network to end up in somebody else's business. I feel the same way. And I know that Nancy and Enrique feel this way as well. We feel that way about like our people's networks too. Like, you know, we're not just thinking about ourselves. We want, we don't want our teams to have that experience you know, or anybody to feel that regret. I've lived that regret in other companies before. Oh yeah. And hey, I'm glad you brought it up about the sampling because listen, in, in our previous company, I lost a lot. I mean, I'm talking about over $10,000, okay? Um, it wasn't a little bit of money. I really, really believed in what they were telling us over there. And we went out, we were sampling bottles and bags. And I, I remember one time, I mean, there was no money. And I remember seeing Enrique take like huge, envelopes full of all our products and sending them to people and me thinking oh my goodness are we 
we must be crazy. And so it was hard for us too. And, it, and that's, and I agree with the Melissa, we were, I would never tell anyone to sample people if it wasn't working. Cause we've done that before. And we've hurt people by doing that over here. We were just on a call. Basically what we need to do with all our new people, whether they're leaders or not, right. Whether they come in with big goals or not is get them to those 20 customers. And the simplest way that I know how to explain that is 40 sticks. I mean, 40 people sampled with your most average person and if they follow the system and use your cup of happy and really get the leader to help them out of those 40 samples they're going to get at least 20 customers okay would you agree would would the people on this call agree that that's possible probably yes yeah if the system is if they're following the system if they're adding okay. them to your cup of happy if they're if they're walking their person through the process yes it works but again, you'll have some people who just send out the samples and then right. expect it to happen on its own with no follow-up, no instructions on how to take the product. Right. Like all those steps matter. So yeah, if you're doing the proper steps, absolutely. It could be higher than, than 20. Yeah, of course. But I'm just saying like middle ground, let's say half. And let's yeah. just say they don't do the pill because a lot of people don't take the pill that, for that sample anyway. So that's $84 worth of samples can get you 20 customers which is a 400 to 600 dollar paycheck if you minus the 84 you've still made a damn good profit that thing needs to duplicate see when we came in and we were with this strange comp plan the only good thing that came out of it is we were compelled to help people get 20 customers right because they had to get there to max out their compensation and so that was one thing I want to get back to too, is keeping that 20 customers and that calculation and the solid steps of how many samples will it take? How much money will it bring in? How much money will come out of my pocket? So people don't feel like, well, I'm just sampling. I don't really know where it's going to go. Right? So we all know 20 customers on dose a month is 400 to $600, somewhere around there. We all know that, um, you know, 80 samples of the coffee or the zest, you know, it's for two each without the pill is 84 bucks. And so there you have it, right? So no one's gonna be scared about going out and sampling 40 people and plugging in with you and making sure they're doing it right. And doing it right does mean the instructions, everyone needs to have those, you know, um, uh, the customer page, they have to plug them in, otherwise it's a, it's a wasted sample. So, um, you know, we would never ever tell people to sample if it didn't work for us. It worked for us like in a ridiculous way that we weren't expecting. Hey guys, Brennan has um, some tips on because it can get overwhelming. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when you're bringing new entrepreneurs in and all of a sudden you have to send out, maybe it's 10 samples, right? Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned in our chat earlier on the platinum chat that, you know, if somebody is really gunning for this and they come in with a network and, or they've had experience in the industry and they want to run, we sent out 25 samples for people, like mm -hmm. a lot of samples yep. for people just to get it moving. Because what happened is like they just shared. We realized, okay, this actually really does work. Ricky taught us to do this. Now we know this is how we do that. So, but to avoid some of the stress of mm -hmm. going to the post office and creating the samples, sample king. <laughs> well, no, you know, it's so funny guys, because they launched the app to make things simpler, which really, I don't think that it is. I think that everyone has it so easy now because we have the blister packs and we have the, the, the trifles the yeah. from the order kits. And it's so easy now to sample and actually with the with the reorder kits too by the way the um the, the trifold is actually is slimmer than the shareable was it said the stock is thinner so it's it's like a dollar 15. so it's so much easier to sample you guys now than it ever was um it's so important obviously to get that personal personal personalization in there with you know we add a little slip of paper that we have it's personalized instructions, instructions yeah. and so forth but yeah um she calls me the sample king because i say i I started in the mail room, right? I mean, literally, I mean, I was putting together all the samples and um, really it's not much more than that. It's, it's so important. I, I made sure I included everything. And Bob will, I know Bob's looking because we used to go back and forth about the bubble wrap and all that stuff and what's too thick to send. And now it's so easy just to put a blister pack of Xanthamax in there and a couple sticks. Actually, I've been doing, personally, I've been doing a stick of zest and a stick of um, elevate. So one zest, one elevate, mm -hmm. Xanthamax. We don't really sample without it. That's just mm -hmm. kind of how we're rolling with it. And I always have 15 to 20 ready. 
like no yeah. matter what. So one thing that he does too is as soon as the box gets to the front door and he has the time to do it, he just gets it all ready. Mm -hmm. So then it's all in envelopes. It's all packaged. It's all ready to go. It all, it has our little return address, you know, stamped on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. All that's left to do is when, when people are ready for the samples, he's just writing the name and the mm -hmm. address. It's in the mail. It's done. Yep. We've got stamps at home. Like that's the system that has helped it become so much more fluid because it is a headache. <laughs> Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, you say you enroll somebody and you're like, Hey, give me 10 addresses. And then all of a sudden you're shuffling to put it all together. It, it, it may drag out the time to a few more days or something. Whereas if you just knock it out before and you've got it ready, it helps. Enrique, yeah. did you have something? To, yeah, I, I, I was going to say, go ahead, Nance. It's, uh, you, we have a system with Elevosity, and you have to have systems in your house. You know, that's a system, right? It's a, you have a little area, it gets done. It's, it's, it's not individual as it comes. You have the samples ready. We're the same way. We have everything ready to go. The minute someone needs a sample, it's in the mail an hour later. Yeah, go ahead, Enrique. So, you know, all of us are leaders here. I know we all get it. We are going to do this. Like for the people who want to blow this thing up and go big, they're going to do it. Now, the key is how do we get our team to duplicate this, right? Because that's the only way this thing works if you get your team to duplicate it. So you have to, you have to like repeat this message over and over again whether it's in your chats, whether it's on coffee chat, you know, um, your cocoa chats at night, you know, whatever, like this message has to be drilled down on every level. That's the only way this thing is going to duplicate the way you envision it. So, um, you know, when, when you are onboarding somebody on that welcome call, you, you say, Hey, you know, like if you, you got the feel for them, you, you know, they're serious about building this business. They came in on a pack you feel comfortable, like they're ready to go. Hey, five to 10 addresses, send me your first five to 10 addresses. Let's get you going. Right. Then that the new person feels, Oh, wow, they're doing this for me. You know, they're going to help me launch my business. And then in return, you, Hey, when you have a new elephant come on, you do the same, you just pay it forward and do the same thing for them to get, help them get their business launched. Right. If everybody's on the same page doing this guys, it's this thing, we're, we're gonna have a record year in 2020 all, all across the board. If everyone, if you get everyone to buy in to this, but it's our responsibility as leaders to drill this into the downlines so they understand exactly what they need to do. They're not guessing, right? And you know, those welcome calls are happening and you know, we're sending out, we're sending out those five to 10 samples for them. If, when the system is rocking and rolling, it's unstoppable. But the thing is getting everybody on the same page. Yes. hundred million percent. Yes. On that. And the other thing you guys is if we are not teaching them the system and we are skipping steps and we're taking shortcuts and you know, we're not sending, getting them started correctly. Guess what happens? The responsibility as the leader is that we did not set them up for the best success. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's okay if we've, we've all made mistakes, right? But now is the time to do it starting fresh, do it the right way, you know, and teach that duplication from day one. And so that means that we take responsibility for all of the people that come into our team that we know we are setting them up for the best chance of success possible. How you do that is exactly this, launching them with the samples to their people immediately, you know, teaching. And here's the other thing, and this is what I learned somewhere in the beginning too, is that it's not enough to just go send out their samples. Like that's not enough. You have to teach them what to do, right? Like you have to teach them, Hey, I'm sending out these 10 samples for you. I'm putting them in the mail tomorrow. Are all of these people in your cup of happy before the sample is sent? Are they in your cup of happy? Awesome. Have you, you know, run through some of this, the script that we mentioned? Awesome. You did. Okay, cool. So I'm sending out these out tomorrow. You need to send a message to everybody on this list and let them know that it went out. Okay. Now you're going to follow up with them. Ask them if it arrived, you know, on the day you ask them, when are you planning to take it? You know, cool. I'm going to follow up with you. I'm so excited to see how you feel like that is the piece that you also have to teach that brand new person 
before those samples go out. Because if they just go out, like it's wasted. <laughs> like, and I don't want, you know, we've lost money by missing those steps in the past. I don't want you guys to lose money. So make sure you, that you are truly setting those people up for success by teaching them, hey, this is what you do with these people that we are sampling for you. And that's so crazy powerful because something that we learned this year and I learned it too by seeing it happen is if we skip one step, then three or four levels down, they're skipping multiple steps. Mm -hmm. right. So. Yeah, and you guys, the other thing is just, you know, keeping it back to the basics of what Ricky taught us of so stinking simple, right? Because we have to know that our 10th generation has the same ability to be successful as our first generation. The more noise, the more complicated, the more steps and this and that we add to this, the less likely that 10th generation is to have the same results as the first generation. So, um Carly, you said something in our chat. I'm not sure if you're able to pop on right now or not. Um, you said something in the chat earlier about, hey, we had killer momentum with sampling. Oh, she left the meeting. <laughs> She's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll touch on it because what she said was amazing, you guys. And it was such like a ding. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but <clears throat> when she got started, right? Um, that was that time when I ran out of samples. It was like, holy moly, I don't have the 25 samples to send out for her, right? Um, big lesson learned, never happened again. But once we got those in, it was just like, she was, she was sending out samples, I was sending out samples. Um, everyone was duplicating that. What came of that was serious momentum, like crazy, crazy growth, where it was like business was doubling month after month after month. Like Enrique and Nancy said earlier, when we lost the shareables, when we lost the sticks, it was like everything slowed down a lot. Okay. So all it is, is that's the power of sampling straight up. I know Kiri and I have had conversations too. She was getting crazy amounts of customers, right? And then all of a sudden business slowed down. What did it go to? Oh, sampling. It was back to sampling. It is the root of everything. So, um, Getting back to sampling. Can you imagine like if we have the same growth in 2020 that we had in 2019 by sampling, business will be, I see Enrique laughing, it would be insane. Like if we had that same growth, like, wow. And here's, everyone can experience it. Every single one of you guys on this call, as well as people that aren't even here yet, right? As well as people who are, you know, like within the team and not on this call right now, like we can all have that crazy momentum and that crazy growth. Yeah, Carly, it was hilarious. I called on you and then it was like, Carly left. <laughs> so Carly, I don't know if you're able to hop on and just share a little bit about um, the momentum that you were experiencing with all of the sampling and then what happened when the sampling slowed down and stopped. Yeah, sorry. So I went to actually go like put my video on and I hung up. <laughs> Goodbye guys. So, um, yeah, so I was actually talking about this in the chat because what had happened was that, um, I didn't necessarily realize what sampling was doing for my team. I didn't really necessarily believe in it just because in the past sampling, um, had been something that companies had used to ploy to get more volume. And I'm very like, um, I don't know. I like to be, you know, raise my sword and fight against the bad guy, right? I mean, I'm just like, that's just who I am. So to me, I was like, mm, I don't know about the sampling thing. I'm feeling a little bit iffy about it. But I can tell you that what happened when the samples went away, when we didn't have them to send out, I saw how it crippled my team. So I had a team full of people that were sampling passionately. And when they lost the ability to do that, um, I saw a drastic decline in their numbers and our numbers as a whole. I mean, obviously we have the reorders, but we didn't have the growth that I had. There's people on my team who literally had not been successful in network marketing before and sampling was what helped them break through that bridge of not having a huge warm market, right? Or what happens when your warm market dries up? How are you gonna do that? Because we don't do the cold messaging thing, right? How are you gonna make it happen unless you're sampling? And I could tell like as soon as, probably about four or five weeks after the sampling, we didn't have the ability to sample anymore. I'm like, dang, this was a huge and integral part of why my business grew like it did and why my team's business grew. So um, I am all about getting back right to it. And I want to do it the old fashioned way, right? None of this app business, you guys, I've got my little blue mailers ready. I'm going to be mailing them out for people for me to grow my own 
retail side of the business, but I'm also going to really be focusing on going back to all those people that I missed that signed up when we didn't have samples to send. And you know what? You better believe I'm going to be reaching out. I'm like, let's get a list. Let's go back and let's do this the right way. And I'm here to help you. And so that's why I'm going to be ordering sample packs today is not just for me, but because I want to go and catch up on those people that kind of missed the boat because we didn't have samples for a season. So that's all I got guys. Thank you. So powerful. Um, and yeah, exactly. Same thing. It didn't really understand how valuable sampling was until you could see the difference. So is, does anyone else have anything that they'd like to add? Ricky, I know that you're on, you are on the road. Is there anything that you'd like to share? I just want to make sure that I open that to you. He's on the road, but he still made the time to hop on. So thank you, Ricky. Um, if anybody else has questions or anything that they'd like to add, please feel free to unmute and go for it. Can you hear me, Melissa? Yeah. Hi, Ricky. Hi, guys. I'm probably going to be coming in and out of um, reception since we're traveling, but no, you guys nailed it in the head. Basically, go back to what help you guys um, completely blow up your business and that was sampling. Hey, you bring in an entrepreneur into your business, say, hey, send me on five addresses to the five, five top people on your list that if you were to grow a million dollar business, these would be my business partners. And some, somewhere along the way, um, like the ladies were talking about, you know, we lost the sampling. Um, and then we had little complications and stuff like that. Guys, we're, we're through that. We're at the end of that 90 day skill, basically, like what I call it. And um, January 1st is gonna be completely different. Um, we do have a virtual um, event on Jan um, January 11th. What people are doing is getting with the local markets, which I'll be doing that in Houston for the people that are in Houston to come over and have like a little mixer because it's gonna be like a mini convention. So guys, start really promoting that to your teams. That way it gets all around the US. And um, go back to phase one activity, guys. We're gonna go on a 90 day run. I'm going into conventions. So um, sampling is the key to this business, guys. I mean, I personally, gonna go back to to the same thing i've never stopped but i'm about to hit it harder than i've ever hit it before so you guys nailed it in the head melissa and Claudia and enrique all of you guys in the call thank you ricky amazing you guys you, here's the deal i've been on call with ricky and he's you know donating blood and going to the post office and he's just living his life right i'm on the call with him and he's like Hold on, girl. Hold on, real quick. And then all of a sudden, he's like, "Hey, do you drink coffee? You heard of that happy coffee everyone's talking about? Oh, you want to try it? Hold on." And literally, he's handing samples to strangers everywhere he goes to this day. Like, yeah, he he's serious. He hasn't stopped. I've heard it on the phone, and I'm just cracking up because I'm like, he lives what he says, right? And I love that his activity has never stopped. We're really excited for the new year. We're really excited for 2020. Um, you know, I made a post about it the other day. I, feel, I felt like 2019 was like getting our feet under us, testing the road, kind of seeing where we're at, and just building trust. Well, now we know what we have, and it is time to run, okay? Um, I want to touch on that really quick. What does an actual run even look like, <laughs> right? I will tell you what it looks like, and I will tell you what it smells like. <laughs> you don't, you know, you don't make time for some of the other stuff. It is sacrifice. I'm going to be super honest with you guys. It's a lot of sacrifice. Were there times where I would have rather just like unplugged and, you know, done other things? Of course, absolutely. But we didn't do that. It was like, nope. We got to run. We have things to do. We got to, you know, get this moving. It was working a lot of hours. It was a ton of sacrifice, but you know what? It pays off. And that's where we're at again. We're starting over just as hungry as the first day that we started last year. Um, you know, complacent is a, not a good place to be. If you get complacent and you get comfortable, guess what? Your business isn't going to stay. It's going to go backwards. So there's no time, no room for complacency. It's get fired up, get excited. Now we have trust. 
products are super solid again and exciting. It is go time. It is right. And just, you know, acting as hungry and feeling as hungry as the day that you got started. And so we are super excited for that. It looks like Ricky raised his hand. Ricky, did you have something? Yeah, can you hear me, Melissa? Yeah. All right. Hey, guys, and also, like, um, get out and about, you know what I mean? If you're sitting at the house just working on social media, making posts and doing all of this, get out and start meeting people. Like, <laughs> I was telling Chris, I said, look, I'm going to start going to the bank. Why am I going to go to the bank? Not to deposit money or anything like that. But think about this, bankers, realtors, um, mortgage brokers, those people right there are people that can come into your business. They already have a huge network. And guess what? They all drink coffee, right? So I told Chris, I said, start whenever I get back home. I'm just going to start going to the local banks and going, hey, uh, I'm just wondering, um, I have this mortgage and I finance X amount of money. And listen to what I'm doing, right? I'm basically going in there just to try to sell them on coffee, but they don't even know that, right? Or share the coffee opportunity with them. So then they're going to go, okay. Um, and then I'm going to say, I'd like to, um, you know, see if I can finance my house for two years instead of 30. And guess what? They're going to ask, what do you do? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Every time, you know what I mean? They're going to ask you, what do you do? Because then they're going to think, why would this person want to finance something for two years versus 30 or five years versus 30, right? And the conversation is going to start. And then that's whenever I go, hey, have you heard about the happy coffee everyone's talking about? It's out there. Opportunity is out there, guys. But through Facebook, I mean, you can only do so much. Through social media, you can only do so much. Get out, go to Starbucks, um, act like you're reading a book, start a conversation with somebody. Guys, if you don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. I can promise you this. If you're not out recruiting in your own market, somebody's going to come in there and become a triple crown in your backyard. It's going to happen. I promise you that. I I've seen it already in other companies, you know, because people go, well, I'm introverted and I don't want to get out in public. Guys, you have a lifetime opportunity here. I believe that. I was talking to Enrique last night, and um, I showed him a picture of this one CEO. They started a, a company about a year ago to try to compete with our product. The, the, the company name was Celis, right? So guess what? What they were trying to do didn't work. Um, he just had an opportunity meeting, I believe, in Dallas in October, okay? in October for Celis, and that was a year into their, their network marketing company. And guess what? Now he sends me a friend request. His page is a completely different company that they're, they're trying to start up because the other one didn't work. And I'm telling Enrique, I'm like, you see, this is what happens in network marketing. Like people jump, even CEO. Okay, this didn't work. Let me go try to do something else. And it's going from company to company to company. And a lot of people in network marketing, they do not become successful in network marketing because they see the shiny object. Well, guess what? That shiny object, you're still going to have to work the business. You're still going to have to go out and talk to people. And guess what? Most of the time, it's not going to be simplistic like what we have here. It's not going to be as easy to talk to. I mean... Look, um, Melissa and um, Enrique, they were out there slinging $1,500 packs. And their customer to rep ratio in that company was one to one, if that, Enrique, Melissa? Negative. <laughs> yeah, negative. Negative. You see, guys, like we, we have something very special, it's customer driven. So even if you're not a recruiter, you can go out there and share a cup of coffee with somebody, but you cannot share a cup of coffee with somebody if you don't have samples. You have to invest back in your business, guys. I'm not telling you to go take out loans or anything like that, but just always have product in hand to where you can share a cup of coffee with somebody 
as you run into somebody at the grocery store because it's going to happen at the most random places. You're going to hear somebody talking about, I'm tired, I'm fatigued, oh, I don't feel good. And then guess what? You're not going to have the sample right there to be able to sample the person. Look, 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 look. I'm on the road. I'm going to show you guys. Look. Hold on. Let me, let me show you something. On the road. Can you see me? Yeah. I have samples in hand. And guess what I do? Every time I get out of the car, I put samples in my pocket as I'm going into the grocery store, the gas station, and I try to start up a conversation wherever I'm at. I'm in between Texas and um, Louisiana or getting closer to New Orleans right now. Guess what? I may meet somebody at a gas station that becomes a triple crown in my business that was looking for something like this. You do not know. And guys, what Melissa's saying, what Enrique, Nancy, all of you leaders, just bring your posture back, okay? Because I know a lot, a lot of leaders on this call probably felt a little deflated because uh, the Thanksgiving holiday, the Christmas holiday, everything kind of slowed down. We lost some samples. Look, guys, it's going to be part of the process as you build anything. I don't care if you're here. I don't care if you go to another company. If you're at a corporate job, you're always going to have some type of issue. It's how you react to the issue and how you posture the problem to your people. Okay? If you're complaining about it, guess what? Your, your people are going to be like, oh, yeah, that's BS, blah, blah, blah. Guys, posture. Say, hey, it's part of what we're going through. We have a great formulator. You know, guys, we're, we're through it. Here it is, 90 days later. Boom. Everybody's loving the nitro. Everybody's loving the version three coffee. It was just a phase that we went through that we had no control over. Okay? We cannot control what the FDA does or anything like that, right? But luckily, like I said, we have an amazing guy that knows how to put stuff together very quickly for us to go out there and um, get a lot more customers and entrepreneurs into our business. With that being said, guys, y'all have a good, good day. I'm going to mute my phone or I'll keep mumbling on. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. I really appreciate you being on. Um, last thought that just came to mind, you know, there are a lot of you on this call who have influence, who have built up networks, who have built up relationships with people so that you have learned to not lean on sampling because you haven't had to sample, right? Um, but I think, it, again, we have to go back to what's duplicatable for the masses. Mm -hmm. And every action that we take, we have to think of that person who does not have influence, who doesn't have a network. You know, maybe their word doesn't carry the weight that yours does, right? And so they can't just make some killer post and, you know, have people flood into them, right? Like, they're going to have to lean on samples, right? Like maybe they've bounced around to a hundred companies and nobody listens anymore. Nobody pays attention anymore, right? Like, so their word's not carrying weight, but you know what carries weight? A sample, right? And that's why everything that we do has to be duplicatable for the person who's least likely to succeed, okay? Mm -hmm. That is the importance. That is how we get a lot of people to win is by keeping it simple, leveraging the samples and making it so that that person can win. That person who's getting started can win. So I just wanted to throw that. Um, Nancy, Enrique, is there anything else that you guys would like to close the call with? Yeah, um, Ricky's going to be on tomorrow's coffee chat. So make sure you get your team on there. Um, it's going to be like end of the month, you know, rally call and what, what we should be focusing on and promoting those um, reorder packs because they're only on sale for two more days, guys. And I mean, if you break down the numbers, it's a huge, huge savings. So, um, you know, we've been reaching out to our leaders and letting them know if, to reach out to their teams and find out who's looking to run on, you know, for the new year and getting them on calls and letting them, you know, map, or map out a plan for them and letting them know what they need to make that happen, which is samples, right? So um, I know most of the downline hasn't bought 
reorder packs. Um, so they're not set up for the new year. So Ricky's going to touch on that uh, on tomorrow's coffee chat call. So make sure you have your team on there. Also, um, I don't know how, I don't know if you guys know the promotion with the uh, Keto Cray. Is that just till the end of the month or is that going uh, into January as well? I'm not the details person, but I think okay. it's to the <laughs> So because that's a great deal to promote um, for people. I, it must be going into the new year, right? Because people are trying to lose weight and that's just another add-on that they're getting 50% off. So been uh, mentioning that and promoting that to our prospects and our new customers as well to get them on that. But, uh, you know, I was talking to Ricky. He said, this is it for promotions. This company was not built on promotions. It was built organically because the product works and it's priced affordably for the masses. The only reason they went to promotion, guys, is because they messed up. They messed up bad on version two. They owned it. It was their way of, hey, whatever we can do to help get the momentum back and get, you know, get our customers back, this is what we have to do. But now everything's set. They've given plenty of promotions. This is it. He, Ricky said there's, no, there's not going to be any promotions for 2020 at all. And I kind of like that better because um, – the value we're already getting so much value for what they're offering and it doesn't get people off of smart shit. Ricky made a good point yesterday when I was talking, he's like, Hey, when you run all of these promotions, people turn off their smart ship and then they go order the promotion and then they forget to turn their smart ship back on or whatever. And then we lose those smart ship customers. Right? So, um, I'm, I'm, all, I'm in agreement with that. Um, we built this without any promotions at all. Um, because what we have is very valuable and it does work. So, um, this is it, you know, who, for your teammates who, uh, want to take, you know, take advantage of this last promotion on those reorder packs, you're never going to see a better deal than what you see right now. Right. They're, they go back up to two, two fifty. um, you know, January 1st. So just the yeah. heads up. I say dig into your teams one by one, get with them individually, figure out what they're trying to do January, February, March and what they're gonna need in terms of samples. And if they're gonna have to buy samples January, February, March anyway, let them set themselves up with a cheaper price right now. We're not getting it again. So you're doing them a favor by helping identify their goals and put an actual solid plan around it, which is sampling and helping them save some money with this promotion. Cause like, like Enrique just said, we're not gonna have it again. We went ahead and put our order in. We know how fast we're gonna run January, February, March going into convention. And um, we're going to be through with those samples, you know, in six weeks. So, yeah, I would just say dig into your teams right now since there's not a ton. There's really not a ton happening at the end of the month, except you want to make sure they're set up for January, right? So. Hi, hi Nancy, real quick, too. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to hear about all of this. Okay, we're talking about samples and all that stuff. Guys, the ambassador trip, we, we, we had a meeting, okay? And this is something in this group right here. Don't post this on Facebook. You will get me in trouble, okay? But the Triple Crowns were talking about it, and we think it would be best for the ambassador trip to be an incentive trip. That way, the ambassadors, the Triple Crowns, the Royal Crowns, the Royal Black Diamond, everybody, the Diamonds, the Black Diamonds, they all have a fair shot to, to go in on this trip, okay? So what does that mean? January 1st, the promotion is probably going to start. They probably won't mention it till about January 11th, whenever they're having the virtual convention event that we're going to do January 11th. But guys, anything that you do starting on the 1st, it's going to help you qualify to the incentive trip, the company incentive trip. And I can tell you what, there's only going to be about 200 spots in that trip. That's it. Okay. So you are getting firsthand the information that's going to be delivered to you January 11th about the incentive trip. I know I was talking to Gabrielle um, probably about a month ago, and she goes, it would be cool if they did something like this. Hey, 
they're doing it, right? It's not an ambassador trip. It's for anybody coming into your business that's new, they can qualify to go on the trip. So that being said, guys, um, it, it's go time. We got two days to stock up on product, start sampling people. I would personally not even sample nobody through the app. It's pointless. It's taking a lot more time for people to get products and you're not getting no commission off of that anyways. Why would you use that app? So I would completely get away from that app at all and not even use that because we, we didn't have it before and we were kicking butt without it. So. Thank you, Ricky. So good, you guys. I hope you're fired up and excited for this year and getting things moving. So as always, when we're wrapping up a leader call, I want you to consider leaders take the information, they take it to their teams. Don't let this information, that is, this excitement stay with you. As a leader, you turn around, you give it to your team, okay? All right, guys, thank you so much for making the time. We're super excited. I will see you all on Coffee Chat tomorrow. Bye. All right, have a great day, guys. Thank you. Bye, Thank guys. you so much, Bye, Ricky. Guys. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Thanks for being on, guys.